Hey guys, it's Dr. Grace with Smile Shop Aesthetics. It's been a minute, but I have to use this opportunity because I have a quick 15 minutes um, to touch up my own Botox. And when I say touch up, it's been several months, if not, you know, longer than it should have been because look, well, you can't see right now, but give me one second. Let me show you how I diagnose and treatment plan. So those are coming back and so is that. And a little on the crows. And I usually try to explain it as I treatment plan each patient when they come in, but I just figured this would be a lot easier to just show you right now how it, I do it, okay? So real quick. So I actually don't like to do too much because um, I want my my kids to know that I'm mad at them still. So this is, so this right in here is a procerus muscle. Let me just start off by doing this. Okay, so it goes up and down and this is a depressor muscle. So actually right in here is where all the facial muscles that are affected by Botox, like from the eye up, they all insert into the skin layer. So there are no bony attachments, meaning that you have to really know the depth of where you're going. But this muscle, you know, it scrunches like this. So if I'm able to get this to calm down a little bit, um, you know, I won't get these horizontal lines right in here as much. And then when I go side to side, you can kind of see the extent of these corrugator muscles here. And these muscles go straight, like inward, right? So when I make that mad face, it's directing itself towards the center. So when we relax that, that will kind of lift this up as well. Um, and some people really like this to go away completely so they don't get those 11s at all. And some people want to still have some expression. So this is very variable. The thing is, it's deep here, but as we go outwards here, we have to go a little bit more shallow because that the fibers over there kind of tuck into other elements and, and run into other muscles such as your frontalis muscle. And we do not want to hit your frontalis too low. So if you ever have that instance where, you know, when you raise your eyebrows and you still see some lines here and here, that's something that you can touch up because we typically like to stay high if you go too low, um, cause you can always hit that up later. But if you go too low to begin with, then this muscle is the only muscle that's keeping your eyes open and it'll drop everything. So that's why you'll feel that heaviness and sometimes even get that like, you know, the, the heavy eyelid effect. So, Right over here, you'll see the extent of where my frontalis starts and ends. For most people, these fibers stay within the center area. Some folks though, do have fibers that will go extending towards the temporalis area. And these are the people that can be spocked. So if you've ever had the spock eye where this corner goes straight up, it's because the fibers out here were not relaxed. Um, and so this eyebrow will tend to go up and this one will go down and what's, re what's remaining is the spock eye. And of course, I always tell all our clients that we can adjust accordingly. So if you do have a Spock eye, no big deal. We inject a little bit more to the lateral because you're one of the 2% of people that actually have frontalis fibers that are laterally extended. So here I don't, again, go too heavy. Something like this. And maybe right there and right here. And then for my crows, it's really not that bad. Is it because I don't smile enough? I don't know. Okay, and I'm only gonna do about 30 units. I know you guys are probably thinking this is super weird that I do it myself, but I kind of like it because I need to know when things are coming. Like, and I do about six units right in the middle. So for me, of all the places to hit up stronger, it would be the corrugators for me too, but just not super heavy where I can't make expressions. And I have got some coffee hands because I may or may not have had too much coffee in the morning. The gas station across the street has this high rev coffee. Always makes my hand a little shaky and especially because I've never done this where I'm like filming myself doing this. It's, I guess I'm a little nervous. To me, this doesn't hurt because I know that it's coming, but I could imagine if, I don't know, some people can't do it to themselves, but I find that it's a lot easier. But I would say that it kind of feels a little bit like mosquito bites, maybe. And some areas will bleed a little more than others, no big deal. And what I'll do is come back 
before I like complete this video, maybe I'll do a follow up in about seven to 10 days to see how everything looks and then show you what I'm looking for if I'm gonna do a touch up. I mean, most of the time it's, I have a hard time even finding time to do a touch up for myself because it's rare that I have time like this where nobody's even in the hallway to look at me like I'm nuts. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. So real quick, post-op instruction wise, um, oh, I didn't take pictures. Okay, so real quick, these are the faces that I'm gonna make before I go into what to do for post-op. I'm gonna do a surprise look so you could see that, an angry look, and then a smile. And then we will take a look and see how it turns out, okay? Um, Post-op wise, what we just want you to do is not to, you know, go to sleep right away where you're leaning on one side, where the Botox can travel to one side or the other. Um, we also don't want you to excessively sweat for the next like two to four hours. What you can do is make some facial expressions for the next hour or two. Um, I know it sounds kind of hokey, but the more you move around, the more the, the fibers are going to, um, the more the Botox will adhere to those muscle fibers. And then after that, it's just a matter of time. So it does take about seven to 10 days for everything to bind in and for you to actually see any results. So hang tight and in about a week, I'll check back in. All right, bye. Hey guys, it's 10 days out since that last Botox injection and I am doing a quick follow-up video with a checkup with myself to see if I need any touch-ups. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that mad face. And you see, I still have these 11s but honestly, this is what I want because I don't want anything that looks too frozen. I want to still keep my expressions. So I am happy with this. I would say about 50% of people are good with that. The other 50% don't want any movement whatsoever. They don't wanna see any lines. They don't want any of that. So in this case, if I were that person, I would just say, we just need to add more. But if let's say one side is pulling more than the other side, then that's something that we would touch up because it's just not even. When I look surprised, you can kind of see like this side, if I really want to be picky, has a little bit stronger pull than this side. And you can see it right here when I go like this, right? So this is something that if I really wanted to, I could put a half a unit here. But to be honest, it doesn't really bother me because my brows are even um, as I'm talking and then also just in, at rest. So I don't want it to drop anymore. So in this case, you know, me personally, I'm good with it. But again, sometimes we'll see that, especially if you have one dominant side of strength, You'll see that uh, when you do it, go to make this face, you'll see some wrinkles on one side and then the other side is completely smooth. We would definitely want to touch that up. Same thing with the crows. Um, most of the time, these are the easiest to kind of keep even just because it's very universal. It's hard to kind of smile on one side and not the other side. So this is the time to discuss dosing. You know, are you happy with the dosing? Where we distributed it? Do you want something weaker next time, something stronger? And then we kind of go from there because everybody's really unique and different. And this is really important for me to get to know your face, your preference, and what you want to see and to make you happy. So anyways, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye, see you next time.